Ja, eh, ni är alla välkomna till denna presskonferens där vi ska presentera årets Nobelpris i fysik. Welcome to this press conference where we will present this year's Nobel Prize in physics. We will keep to our tradition and start in Swedish and then continue the presentation in English. Of course, you're free to pose questions in either language later on. Jag heter Staffan Nordmark och är ständig sekreterare här vid Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin. Och med mig som bisittare har jag tre sakkunniga fysiker som snart ska berätta mer om årets Nobelpris. Till höger har vi professor Per Delsing, ordförande i Nobelkommittén för fysik. Och till vänster professor Ann Lullier och professor Olle Inganäs som båda ledamöter i Nobelkommittén för fysik. Årets Nobelpris handlar om ljus. Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin har beslutat utdela 2014 års Nobelpris i fysik till professor Isamo Akasaki vid Meijo University och Nagoya University i Japan, professor Hiroshi Amano vid Nagoya University i Japan och professor Shoji Nakamura vid University of California, Santa Barbara, USA. Akademins motivering lyder för uppfinningen av effektiva blå lysdioder vilka möjliggjort ljusstarka och energisnåla vita ljuskällor. This year's prize is about light. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2014 Nobel Prize in Physics to Professor Isamo Akasaki at Meiju University, Nagoya and Nagoya University, Japan, Professor Hiroshi Amano at Nagoya University, Japan, and Professor Judy Nakamura at University of California, Santa Barbara, USA, for the invention of efficient blue light emitting diodes, which has enabled bright and energy-saving white light sources. Professor Bert Elsing will now give us a short summary in English, please. So today the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences is awarding the Nobel Prize in Physics for the invention of blue light emitting diodes. Uh, red and green LEDs have been around for many years, but the blue was really missing. This lamp contains three LEDs, one red, one green, and one blue. If you combine these colors, you get white light. This is something that Isaac Newton uh, showed already in 1671. Thanks to the blue LED, we can now get white light sources which have very high energy efficiency and very long lifetime. This LED technology is now replacing older technologies. In fact, many of you carry this technology in your pocket. The Flashlight and also the screen of modern smartphones uses LED technology. Professor Uli Inganes will now continue and give you some of the details. And we will continue to look at the history of lighting, which has been around now for the last few millennia of, of human evolution. We started out by burning fuels inside lamps. In the geometry, quite similar to that lamp we see over there. However, that has mainly been used here at KVA, using incandescent lighting and electrical light uh, over the last hundred years or so, since Edison invented these things. The fluorescent lamp was introduced somewhere in the early 20th century. And then we saw much, much later the arrival of the lighting element that we are now celebrating in this year's Nobel Prize. And what you see is, of course, an enormous increase of the power efficiency, of the use of electrical energy in generating light. Now, something like a fourth of our electricity consumption in most uh, industrialized economies goes to illumination. So these effects, having much, less, much more light for much less electricity, is really going to have a big impact on, on our modern civilization. Uh, we see that impact. You see it in the streets, you see it on the cars, you see it in the lights, you see it in new uh, optical environments like this one from a, 
uh, festival of, of, of light somewhere in Japan. And they're all based on the use of these light emitting diodes. They come in different colors, not only white, but blue, red, and green, as we saw here. Uh, and they have not only the advantage of much, much better using the electrical energy, they also give a very much longer lifetime, maybe 100 times longer than that of the standard incandescent lamp that is now being um, going into re retirement. Uh, also, it doesn't bring the mercury along that uh, intermediate generation of fluorescent tubes uh, is, is uh, contributing as a problem to industrial civilization. So we will most certainly be able to use this technology. But it took a long while to arrive at this possibility. Uh, the red LEDs have been around since the early 1960s. The green LEDs, some years later, uh, advances in semiconductor technology using band gap uh, semiconductors with different band gaps lies at, the high, uh, li lies at the base of this. But the blue thing, the blue light emitting diode, was very, very difficult to accomplish. Not that there was a lack of effort. There was continuous efforts in industries to generate blue light uh, emitting diodes. Because today, with the ad advantage of having these available, we can generate all those colors. We can combine in, in uh, color mixing with three different colors in the individual lamp. Or we can use, as you will find mostly maybe on the market today, a blue or UV emitting LED illuminating a thin layer, absorbing this energy and uh, converting it to other colors. Uh, the structure of these uh, lamps are very similar to what you have at the base of your semiconductor electronics that's driving the information uh, technology. A, a diode, a combination of semiconductor materials where you have one layer carrying holes, one layer carrying electrons they transport these charges at two different energy levels, but when they meet in this intermediate layer, the active layer, they recombine, and when they fit, fall into each other, they turn up and turn light on. That was light. That was there. Uh, so this is the physical mechanism uh, that lies at the heart of this uh, device. And our laureates of, of this year have contributed greatly by the inventions that made it possible to grow the gallium nitride and alloys of gallium nitride materials in the particular geometry suitable for building such diodes. Uh, you have to be able to grow these. And that was attempted for three decades before the, in, the inventions of, of Akasaki, Amano, and Akamura. You have to be able to form these diodes. And there was a great problem with passivation of the dopants being used to create these. It was solved by discoveries and inventions in these Japanese labs. And you have to introduce more colors, and you have to build them into structures which well confine the electrons and the whole searching each other in order to generate light emission. Uh, and these are the structures, as, as you find them today, a great number of, of abbreviations on top of each other. Each layer may be a fraction of a micrometer thin deposited from the vapor phase in big uh, synthesis machines. Uh, what you see in the... In, in the um, at the market might be a light bulb like this where there's a tiny, tiny speck of matter with this structure, sub-millimeter sub size, is emitting uh, quite a bit of light. Today, uh, or the yesterday, when this figure was compiled by uh, satellite photographers uh, of, of NASA, uh, this is where we see light being generated in the industrial economies, mainly and with the great urban areas of the world. Uh, but of course, the access to electricity is very weak in many areas of the globe. There is no electricity net. They don't have the electrical power generation accessible. This is changing because solar lanterns uh, being used to little electricity help out in balancing the, uh, the systems where you have uh, solar photovoltaic plants and store them in batteries for use at night. So in the future, I believe, this map will look different. And this is very much in the, in the uh, mind of Alf Nobel, who wanted to give his prize for the, to the inventions for the better uh, ben benefit of mankind. And this is why we award this year's prize to Akasaki, Amano, and Nakamura. Thank you, Professor Inganes. And we are now trying to see if we can get Professor Nakamura on the phone. 
uh, I should say it's about three o'clock in the morning, uh, 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 and uh, I think I woke Professor Nakamura up just 15 minutes ago. So I said, good morning, Professor Nakamura. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. I'm here. Yeah. And congratulations. Uh, I'm sitting here in the session hall at the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, uh, and we have a press conference uh, with many interested journalists from Swedish and international press. And are you ready to take some questions from them, Professor Nakamura? Yes, I am ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> yes, it's okay. Yeah. Do we have any questions for Professor Nakamura? Uh, good morning, Professor. Uh, congratulations. Um, we have already... <laughs> We have already heard uh, some things said about the significance of your discoveries. Could you please, in your, your words, tell us about the, what you think is the significance of your discoveries? Oh, my work is, uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, the technique, I, I, I clarified uh, uh, why we couldn't right, right? The experience. Also, another big group breakthrough in my case is a deep fast hybridized variety. Also, a deep fast virus is a virus. This is a 35 nitrate. It was very difficult to hear you. Your, your, your voice is breaking up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mr. Kash. Do we have some other questions? Uh, yes, congratulations. Um, how did you feel being woken up like this in the middle of the night with the message that you uh, have won the Nobel Prize? Oh, hello? <laughs> hello? Hello? Yeah, is it, is it, is it a question again? No, yeah. I don't know if you heard the question was uh, just uh, how did, did it, what did it feel like to be waking up in the middle of the night with the message of, that you'd received the Nobel Prize? Oh, yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. <laughs> it's sleeping, so. Oh, yeah, uh, it's like, uh, oh, yeah, amazing, you know, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, uh, um, well... Thank you, Professor Nakamura, and, and uh, from all of yeah. us here, we, we congratulate you once again, and, and uh, perhaps you can yeah. sleep, perhaps you can go sleep a few hours, but then I think there will be a lot of media outside your house. So thanks oh. again. Okay, uh, thanks very much. So, uh, are there now any questions to... to, to our experts here at the panel, something that you would like to, to, to have clarified? Please. Yeah, my name is uh, Sophie Chen Axason from a uh, freelancer for China Radio. Um, I heard this uh, prize is about the energy and LDD. So when you uh, consider this prize, mm -hmm. is uh, do you consider the element that will be contribute to the society in practice more than in theory? Um, my response would be say that, that we are cherishing the tradition that Alfred Nobel, who was a great inventor, uh, he wanted his prize to be given to inventions for the benefits of mankind, and that's what we emphasize today, is the usefulness of this thing, uh, and the usefulness in so many applications. We emphasize very strongly the fact that it can be used for, for white lighting, 
But we've seen over the years how these inventions of the blue light emitting diode was used in the blue laser diodes used for optical storage, how coming generations of, of communication will rely on the use of, use of, of light rather than radio waves in Li-Fi rather than Wi-Fi, and how you can use these uh, blue or UV light in order to sterilize uh, water. There are so many uses of this, and, and the uses, I think, is what would uh, make Alfred Nobel very happy. Something to add? Or? No, I, I, can, I can add that this is really an invention uh, prize. It's not a, maybe less a discovery prize as other prize, but an invention prize. And in this type of prize, we really uh, emphasize the usefulness of the, of the invention, and this is the case in this case. Do we have some more questions? Uh, if not, uh, I'd like to, to... We have a question over there. Yes. Hello, I'm Oliver G. from the local Sweden's News in English. Uh, it was a little hard to understand uh, Mr. Nakamura on the phone, but <laughs> perhaps uh, you could recount how it was to ring up and let him know that he won the prize and we could hear it from your side. Yeah, from, from uh, my side, we, we reached two of the three laureates. Professor Amano happened to be on a plane from Japan to France at this very moment, so we, we, we couldn't reach him. Uh, but we could uh, reach Professor Akasaki and, uh, and Professor Nakamura. And, uh, of course, they are thrilled uh, of, of getting this prize. And I, I think actually they were not prepared for it. Uh, uh, they, they had not been waiting all day and all night for this call. And, and if you happen to be on a plane, I think that's how it is. And of course, it's, it's a fantastic experience for us to, to be the first to, 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 to wake them up or call them in the evening and, and congratulate them uh, achieving the Nobel Prize in Physics. So that's a great honor on our part. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'd like to, to end this uh, uh, conference and uh, see you tomorrow when we are announcing the Chemistry Prize uh, at the same time and in the same hall. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.